reacting to the situation of the peak power deficit. In fact, uh, let's pull up the uh, the tweets that we had from uh, uh, Power Minister R.K. Singh. He acknowledged the fact that we are hitting these peak power demand levels. Uh, says, and I quote, All India peak power demand met, uh, uh, reached a high record of 239.97 gigawatts as of the 1st of September. This is an all-time high so far. The sudden rise in power demand was met by taking several proactive measures. Then he goes on to name those measures. Uh, aggressive capacity addition, running coal-based plants at full throttle to massive renewable deployment. So he's going on to talk about how the government is taking cognizance of what is going on. Now let's talk about some of the constituents in the power chain. And, uh, you know, IEX is one such company. In fact, we have Mr. Goyal, the chairman uh, and MD of the India Energy Exchange, to talk about this and really what this means for their business because it seems that volumes are really rising at the exchange level as well. We've got the business update also in from IEX this morning. Mr. Goyal, thanks for joining in. Uh, first, explain to us what you're seeing at the exchange in terms of a rise in demand, uh, the rise in tariffs, if any. What what does this peak deficit of 240 gigawatts, what does it mean for traded volumes? Good morning. In fact, let me correct you. It is not peak deficit of 240 gigawatt. It is the peak demand. Peak demand. Deficit. Peak demand. Yes. 240 gigawatt and it is yeah. all-time high. Uh, in fact, uh, anticipation was that it will be about 227, 228 gigawatt. But this year, the demand increase has been very high. In the month of August, demand has increased overall demand has increased by almost 16 percent and uh, as a result of that our exchange volume has also increased significantly uh, electricity segment our volume grew by almost 21 percent in the month of august uh, we are getting very high buy bids but on the sell bid side yes because of the high demand uh, the supply side constants are there so at, and we expect that in the month of september and october also these are also high demand months and this uh, demand and volume growth will continue. Uh, sir, I want to come on, come in on the point about volumes. August has been strong for you, volumes of 21%. I believe even July was a similar growth number. Yes, you have yes. a guidance of 15% in terms of a volume growth for the full year. Uh, yes. Considering the strength that we've seen in the last two months, would you like to change your guidance? And what is your estimate of the volumes just in the near term as we contend with this peak power demand? I think 15% uh, is a doable number. Uh, looking at what we did in the month of July, August, and uh, in the coming months also, the demand growth is going to be there. So I'm sure that 15% uh, volume growth overall on overall basis will be is possible to achieve. We will have definitely going to achieve that. Okay, mm -hmm. going to achieve around 15%. Uh, Mr. Goel, thanks for joining us. Could you take us through a little bit on the pricing end as well? I mean, I know, of course, that the pricing has gone up, but there is a ceiling on what you can charge, right? So how does this kind of sort of build up in demand really, um, you know, take take your prices higher? Yeah, the price, uh, there is a price cap of 10 rupees in the market yeah. segment. Earlier, this was 20 rupees. And uh, there was a concern that uh, because of the high demand, the prices are getting increasing uh, with this price cap also because of the high demand the, in the month of august the prices have increased they were almost about six rupees 89 pesa a 30 percent increase over last august so but overall for the full year if you see the price uh, discount on the exchange platform are 20 percent less than the first five months of last year so that is a positive thing mm. So what Mr. Mr. Goyal, number? just to take that point forward, 689 is, I think, the prevailing price. It's still not gone up to the cap of 10 rupees. Do you, do you see that happening? Uh, so what, because you're saying what, there's, a, there's, a, there's a mismatch in the, the bids and the supply. So will we see the, the price reach the cap of 10 rupees? See, on the exchange platform, we, did, we have 96 time blocks. And the price is discovered, separate price for each of the time blocks. During the morning and evening hour, so when the demand is high, the price is, price is touching to 10 rupees also. But during daytime, we have high renewable capacity in the country, so prices are lower. So this is the average price for the day, what I'm talking about. Mm. Uh, Mr. Goyal, um, you know, just intuitively, when the power price is very high, one would imagine the clients' enterprises moving away from spot prices and entering into longer duration. Uh, prices just to give them that stability in prices. Uh, are you seeing that happening? Uh, and if yes, how does it impact IEX, given your mix? 
So if you look at the power price for the different months, there is a large variation in the price. The month of August, we saw very high price. But if you look at the price for the month of April, May, June, the prices were not high. So I don't think just because of increase, increase of price in a particular month, there will be tendency to shift to the long duration contracts. And on the exchange platform also, there is a very high liquidity and there is flexibility in meeting the demand. If somebody, some states may be willing to purchase power only in the evening peak hours. There are states who are intending to buy power during the night hours to supply agricultural consumers. So all that kind of flexibility is available in the market platform. Whereas in the long-term contracts, you have to buy power on 24 by 7 basis and 365 days. So I think tendency for shifting to long-term contract is still not very evident. Uh, not many transactions are happening on a long-term basis. Okay, got that. Uh, sir, we can also talk about the market coupling paper which came out recently. I'm sure you've seen that. What are your initial thoughts on uh, on this paper? Yes, yeah, CRC has come out with the discussion paper on the market coupling. This is a staff paper and this was this came on 21st of August. It is talking about uh, some of the benefits which can be derived out of the market coupling, which is the uniform clearing price, optimum utilization of transmission system. But uh, at the same time, it is also talking about the challenges in implementation of market coupling. And uh, one of the challenges that the role of the exchanges will get diminished and there will be, mm. in fact, it will reduce competition in the market. There will be no incentive for innovation. And uh, in fact, uh, this will also reduce to regulatory uncertainty because uh, the people have made investment based on the regulatory provisions which are there in the sector. So, sure. and particularly, you know, exchanges are doing just about 7% of the total generation through the market. And uh, for this kind of a volume, coupling will not really give any significant advantage. There are many challenges also in implementing coupling, which is who should be the market coupling operator, which are the market segments where coupling should be operated, implemented, mm -hmm. how to do the clearing and settlement. Today, exchanges are doing their own clearing and settlement. If there is a coupling, who will do the clearing and settlement? Mm -hmm. So, I think looking at all these things, I'm sure... CRC has invited the discussion, the comments on from all stakeholders. They will consider all these things. But what I feel is what is required now is that Indian power sector is heading towards a transition. We are going towards high renewable where there is high volatility. So what is required is we should do a holistic study about the power market design. Mr. Goel. And, yeah. Uh, so Mr. Goel, sorry, allow me to come in over there. Uh, we're just running a little short on time. Now, uh, you know, what is, if you could tell us what is the recommendation you have made uh, to CERC or any of the regulators on this regard? Because, you know, the market is concerned. There was, for instance, a brokerage note that came out just after this paper was released, uh, reducing, I, I know you're not looking at the stock price, but just for a reference sake, uh, reducing the target price on the stock, saying that IEX is going to re uh, lose its moat if there is market coupling. So what is your recommendation and which of the two mechanisms would you prefer? You know, when it comes to aggregating bids, would you want to see a central authority aggregating bids? Uh, bids? Should it be, you know, exchange, exchange uh, on rotation basis? What do, would you want which would be least disruptive to your business? And what's the timeline by which you think this will uh, become a reality? So number one, market coupling will not lead to any advantage in this present market design. So our recommendation to the regulator is that market coupling is not desired. Exchanges should continue to do the price discovery and they should do a holistic study about the design, market design, what is required for the emerging power sector in the country. And whatever is good for the country, that should be implemented irrespective of who gets benefit out of that. Hmm. Okay, no, but I'm, that's, your, that's your recommendation, we get that. But what is your assessment in terms of the hit if if this goes ahead in its current form? <coughs> what could be the hit to your business in terms of loss of market share, loss of volume? And uh, realistically, what are the timelines? Because the consultation paper is out. I'm not sure if, you know, by the end of this year, by when could we get the final version? Do you have any uh, estimations? Because you would be part of all these discussions. Timelines, these kind of activities, you know, this is a change in market design. It will need a lot of time. There is a consultation paper. If, they, if at all CRC decides to go ahead, then they may go for the study on these things, what should be the construct of it. Then they will come out with draft regulations. A software <clears> will have to be bought that will have to be customized for the Indian conditions. And I think clearing and settlement mechanism will have to be worked out. So all these activities may take maybe something anywhere around two to three years. 
And uh, uh, right. as far as our market share is concerned, uh, looking at the kind of platform which we have created, the customer centric activities we have done in the uh, sector, and the kind of connect which we have built with our customers, I don't really see any loss in the market share. Okay. Mr. Goyal, we leave the conversation here for now. Thank you very much for joining in. We will slip into a very short break on that.